Hello, welcome back to Mr. Dada's CAD Tutorials. Today I'm going to show you how to do an orthographic drawing. We're going to draw a simple shape like this. Just to teach you the basics, um, there are three views that we are going to draw. The front, the top, and the right side view. And that's the exact position that those three views will always be drawn in. The front always goes here, the top always goes here, and the right side will always go here. In the last videos, I showed you how to use the tools and set up your title block and border and tape your paper down square with your title block, uh, with your T-square. So, I'm going to use, uh, when I lay this shape out, my 9H pencil, which remember is for construction lines, guidelines. They're very light lines. And I want to use that to set up and start to draw my shape before I darken them in with my borderline pencil, the F, labeled the F, with the F. But for this video, I'm just going to go ahead and use my object line pencil just so you can see the lines a little bit darker. So again, I'm going to draw this shape in this position in my lower left hand corner of the paper. And I want to start out making sure I leave space at the bottom and on the side of my title block or my border so that there's room. Maybe later on we'll have to add dimensions and whatnot. So you want to make sure you leave room. And I like to leave about an inch space here and here. And it just depends on the shape. Sometimes you can leave more um, depending on the size of the, of the object you're drawing. But you always want to center your, your three views in the paper if you can. So let's start to draw the front view. This is four inches long. So I'm going to start out and I'm just going to draw a line again about an inch from the bottom and an inch from the edge. So it's close, it doesn't have to be perfect. Make sure your T-square is down flat, tight against the edge. And I'm going to draw a light line all the way across my paper, basically. And then I can go ahead and draw a line vertically. Up towards the top. And one thing I forgot to do, as I noticed when I start to draw, it should remind you as well, that when you see that graphite powder that dust left behind from your pencil, remember that that can smudge. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to brush that away. I'm going to take my eraser pad, and I'm just going to hit that a few times on there and put that those eraser shavings down to help prevent smudging. Now I can go ahead and measure across four inches and again this is my front view always start with your front view draw that first I'm going to measure across four inches I'm going to make a little mark and I can go ahead and measure up to it while I'm at it two and a quarter is what this measures so I can measure that up two and a quarter So I have two little marks here for those measurements. Again, a vertical line I need to draw with one of my triangles. And I'm going to draw this line all the way up again, lightly. And then I can draw this line all the way to the right. Remember the other tips I gave you in the past, spin your pencil tip lightly as you go. So you have a nice consistent line and one nice even stroke. Now, because these are construction lines and you're going to go back over and darken these object lines later, you don't have to worry about that as much right now. So I have a basic shape of my front view, but it's not complete. But notice what I've done. I projected up and to the right so that I can draw my top and right side views in there 
and that's going to help, and that's that's what orthographic projection really is. So to finish my front view, I can measure this, which is two inches. I can measure down, inch and a quarter. And for this, you can stop close. You can eye it up and try and get as close as you can. If you go too far, it can be erased later on. Because again, these are just basically construction lines at this point. And now my front view is almost done until we go back and add this, this hole in later on. But I'll do that last. Okay, so I always like to do my front view first, then I like to do my top view next. Okay, so again I want to leave some space between my views. So again depending on the size of the shape uh, will vary how much space, but you want to leave at least three quarters of an inch. An inch would be probably a little better if you can. And that's where I can start my top view now. And now I can draw this line perfectly in one shot. And I don't even really have to ever go back over that line if I do it with my object line pencil. And um, get it perfect the first time. And that's a good thing that you want to try and practice over time so you don't have to, so it saves you time. And... Um, if you can help not going over lines, that, that's better too. So again, this is my top view. That's what we're looking at. So this measures one and a half inches. So from this line, I can measure up an inch and a half, make a little mark, and then I can draw that. Okay, my top view is almost done. Now notice the one line I didn't project from before was this feature. You always want to remember to project everything. Transfer all features from one view to all the other views. So I need to transfer this feature up here because I have to show this edge. That is an object line, or I can see this edge. So we have to represent that with an object line. So a very simple way to do that is to go back now. I don't even have to measure again because I know the line is here. So I can line my triangle up with that line in my front view and then simply add it in to my top view. You just have to make sure you account for your pencil tip so that it's accurate. Okay. The next thing I need to do before I start my side view, my right side view, is I need to draw a 45 degree angle so that I can project from my top view over and down to my right side view. So even though this shape doesn't have a corner, there's no material here that exists, I know where that corner is because of the way I projected. And if you hadn't projected that way, you would need to find this corner because that's where I'm going to make my 45 from. You always make your 45 degree line from that corner, whether there's material there or not. So line it up with the edge and draw a light guideline, 45 degrees. And you can stop as long as this can project over and hit that line, you can stop just above that point. Now I'm going to project these lines over where they hit the 45 and then I'm going to bring them down. Now one nice thing to do to save yourself time later on is instead of touching this corner like I just did with my pencil, now I'm going to have to go back later on, get my shield, 
cover it up, erase it, back away from there. It takes a lot of time, a lot more than if I thought ahead before, I could save myself time later on. So what I'd rather you do is line up your T-square, but start back here, leave a space, and then project over to the 45. It's going to save you a lot of aggravation later on because now I don't have to smudge and make erase marks. Now that those two lines are transferred over, there's no other features here to transfer at this time. I can bring those two lines down. And again, if you want to stop short and then start again and leave a space and stop perfectly at this corner. And the reason I left a space here was because for classroom purposes, I'm going to ask you to actually keep this on your drawing when you hand it in. Uh, a small portion of it, just so that I can see that you've done everything correctly. So if you leave a space, again, you don't have to go back and erase. You can just hand it in like that. And now my right side view is completely constructed. The shell is made because of all the projections I made from my front view when I drew those lines and then projected down from my top view. And because of this 45, when I left that inch space here, it automatically leaves an inch space between these two views. So you can't forget to do that 45 before you start your right side view. Now, notice this shape has a hole drilled in it. So it measures an inch over from this edge, because we need to find where center is. So I measure an inch over to the center, and an inch, I'm sorry, a half inch down from the top. So that's how I'm going to find where I need to draw it here. So I'm going to come over again about an inch, make a mark, come down a half inch, Now I have two little marks that I know where center is. Okay. I can take small holes like this. Small circles are much easier to do with a circle template than a, than a compass. So what I need to do is I kind of need to lengthen those a little bit with very light guidelines. So that I can use the template correctly. Again, I'm drawing lines much darker than you will, so that you can see them on the film. You want these are these should just be drawn very lightly, just enough that you can see them. I'm going to find a half inch, and remember those lines on the quadrants that we talked about. I'm going to line those four black lines up with these lines. Once they are perfectly aligned, I can go ahead and draw that circle. And now I need to represent this feature, this hole, in my top view and in my right side view. So I can project. I don't even have to measure. I don't have to measure again at all to get the, to find where that belongs. I just line my T-square up with the bottom of the hole here and draw my hidden line across because that hole goes all the way through. And in my right side view, we can't see that hole, right? But we still need to represent it because it's still a feature of the object. Remember to make your dashes about an eighth of an inch long and leave a nice small space in between and then project up. And you'll never have to touch these lines again if you do them right the first time. 
I'm kind of rushing to, to time restraints on the video. But there's my hidden lines. And then center lines will need to be added in. And you want to always do this with a 9 inch pencil because center lines are light and thin. There should be an 8 inch overhang from the edge. And then you stop in the middle. Long, short, long. 8 inch overhang on either edge. Long, short, long. 8 inch dash, small space on the edge uh, in between. And I'm going to stop there. I'm going to continue with another video, part two, and show you the rest of the center lines and how to finish this drawing up.